Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Common Core Pods, which is being made by forum user Raptor Hunter MZ. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a handful of new command pods for you to use on your ships, as well as a few decouplers to go with them. Kind of a small parts pack at the moment, but I should point off right here that it is a basic release and there are more parts to come for instance parachutes apparently according to the forum post at the time of recording this video because I'm actually kind of pre-recording this a couple of days uh, the parachutes are having some trouble so at the moment it's just command pods and decouplers but more as I said should come soon so VAB we go and let us grab the Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake, and then head over to a custom category I created because unfortunately, no matter what I typed into the search bar up here, I could not get all of these parts to show at once cause well, we've got two different manufacturer names and also one without a manufacturer at all. Again folks, beta release, so this part is probably still being worked on. But nonetheless, let's start by looking at the command pods, considering, well, the name is Common Core Pods, so that seems like a sensible place to start. So, the first one here is the CCP Gilly, and if we pop that on top of the Mark 1-2, you can see it's certainly not a stock alike mod, which as you may know if you've watched this channel for a while, I do prefer stock alike like, but nonetheless, it's quite well modeled, quite well made, so I do quite enjoy it. And, well, as you can see, we've got a lot of good detailing to this particular model with good windows, whatever that's supposed to be, and I think my favorite part is the don't forget the ladder note here on the hatch. Always good to remind yourself of that. And you may notice also we do have some RCS ports around the whole thing, which is always good because, well, it does have RCS, as you can see right here. Now, as for the other stats, it does require crew, a minimum of one, maximum of three. Sadly, at the time being, it does not have an internal view. Again, beta. But besides the RCS built in, it also does have a reaction wheel with 20 torque, the typical science experiment with crew report. 500 electric charge and 40 mono propellant to go along with that lovely RCS system. So overall a pretty nice decent little command pod though quite large as you can see the difference between the Mark 1-2 and this one and you may notice it's kind of an awkward size which you may be thinking guys you may be thinking here that perhaps it's a 3.75 meter command pod but if we just go grab a 3.75 meter tank, you'll notice, uh, oh god, we should probably zoom out for this and flip some things around. Let's pop that there, you under here, and you there. You'll notice, no, not quite, not quite. It seems to be, I haven't figured it out exactly, but it seems to be about roughly three meters in size. It's a bit bigger than the 2.5 meter, not quite the size of the 3.75, it's somewhere in between, which is an interesting choice to go with, but nonetheless, I've never shied away from interesting choices in the past, so let us take a look at the next command pod then. The next one in line that we'll have a look at is the CCP Minmus, which is nearly identical in a lot of respects to the CCP Gilly. It has the three command pod, the one minimum, of course. It does have RCS, I'll get back to this part up here momentarily. Uh, the reaction wheel with 20 torque, the crew report, 500 electric charge, 40, oh actually 80 mod repellent, and then you'll notice it also has liquid fuel and oxidizer, 360 on the liquid fuel, and 440 on the oxidizer, and that's because the part we skipped up here, this baby's got built-in engines. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now as we can see here it has two different flight modes. The uh, max thrust here on the first one is a 233 kilonewtons in atmosphere and it will uh, consume quite a bit of fuel to do so. Liquid fuel of 7.648 per second and oxidizer of 9.347. So it'll burn pretty nicely and it'll take a while to go through the fuel but you could go through it more quickly. If you go down here, where we have a uh, maximum thrust in atmosphere of 1136 kilonewtons, but to get that speed, 
Oh, you're going to have to consume 104 liquid fuel per second and 127 oxidizers. So you'll pretty much go through your entire fuel reserves in about, uh, what was it, about three, four seconds or so? Yeah, about three, four seconds. So uh, not exactly your long-term solution, but it is certainly an option for if you're wanting to get just a quick burst. Oh boy, oh boy. Now as for the uh, look of it, as you can see, it's pretty much identical to the Geely in every way, shape, or form, except we have, of course, these little engine thruster ports along the sides here, which is quite a nice little addition. And that is the CCP Minimus. So the final pot is the CCP Ike, and again, it's pretty similar to the Geely in the size and shape, except now our engine ports are actually outside a bit more, extruding from the ship, and uh, have quite a nice little look to them. I think this is by far my favorite one of the pods. I just, I love the look to it. It's quite cool looking. And of course, the similar sort of three crew capacity, one minimum. The engines on this one are identical, basically, to the previous one in both their thrust and consumption, so no real use going over that again. The RCS, 20 reaction wheel, crew report, 500 electric charge, 360 liquid fuel, 80 motor propellant, and of course, 440 oxidizer. So it's basically identical to the Minmus in all except for form factor. It's got the nice little bits going out there, which, like I said, I think this one's my favorite of the three because, well, it's it's got that. It's, it's it adds some nice dimension to it. It's quite cool looking. But let's pop this thing down here because now let's look at the decouplers. We have th four decouplers and also a, a heat shield, which is oddly named, so I'm not even going to try and say that name there. Uh, but yes, again, I don't think this part's finished quite yet, but it is a heat shield nonetheless. It's, you know, looks like pretty much every heat shield in the, or every other heat shield in the game, except it's black rather than the more yellowish brown of the stock ones. And uh, does, of course, have a separator on it with a 100 ejection force and the ablator amount of 1250. Now, as for the proper decouplers, Again, all odd names to them. Hopefully they get finished with proper names soon. But we'll start with this one right here, which, um, the 330 Separator, I guess is the name it's supposed to be going for. Decoupler Force of 100, which is the same for all of these babies, so we won't mention that again. And as you can see here, it's going straight down from the sides of this thing. So it is the same odd sort of custom radius as the command pods here, which makes it interesting because, well, if we're adding to fuel, you know, the 3.75 is too big and the 2.5, of course, is too small. So I don't know, hopefully, maybe, perhaps the mod maker will add in his own fuel tanks down the road, or perhaps there's mods out there that fit this specific size. I mean, there's a lot of fuel tank mods, so there very well, well may be one of those floating around somewhere. But for now, it's kind of an odd decoupler out. But that's why we have other decouplers. If we take that one off and go to this one, the 250 adapter, this baby, it goes down to the 250 to the 2.5 meter size. So if we go down and grab one of these again, you know what? I should probably just leave it out here. Same for the 3.75. We'll leave you right there. And the 2.5 now fits. And I like that. I like that. You get that nice sort of bulbous shape up top and then down to your normal sized rocket here. Very good and kind of got an industrial look to it as you can see. You can also kind of see through it a bit, which I find uh, a little unnerving for strength purposes. But then again, uh, how you can see through it really doesn't matter for this game. It just works. I should also probably point out if you do have the ablator on the bottom, it will, of course, get a custom fairing or shroud rather there. Again, more of a sort of industrial look to it which I quite enjoy. Now, as for the next decoupler, oh god, again, let's leave the 2.5 meter tank there. Uh, the next one that we have is a 3.75 meter adapter, which actually, I just realized the name. I just realized the name, 330 Separator. So the size of the ship is 3.3 meters. That makes sense now. That's taken me far too long to understand that. But yes, there we go. So that's a 3.3 meter size radius. And of course, with this 375 adapter, we go up to the proper 3.75 meter size. So we can click that on perfectly fine there. So we go from a smaller ship to a larger one, which is quite cool. So that's good to have those. And the final decoupler we have 
Oh boy, that's a five meter size. So that is the 500 adaptor, and now that I realize that that number there is what it goes to, that makes so much more sense. Wow. Wow. That's that's my kind of day there at the moment. All right, so yes, the 500 adaptor goes to a 5 meter size, which unfortunately I don't have any 5 meter size tanks at the moment, so I can't really show that in comparison. But yes, it will fit that quite nicely to go with an even larger rocket, which is always good. So let us go and open a crappy little common core craft that I made earlier to show off all of these, and let's just uh, make sure all of them have crew. Bill, you down there. Bob, you there. What the hell, Valentine or er, Valentina? You go join Jebediah, and let's go out to the launch pad and uh, take a look at these engines. Because of course the Geely, well that's not going to go anywhere once we decouple. It's literally just going to fall and roll away because the Geely is the only one of the three which doesn't have an engine. Now of course this one, the Minmus, does have its lovely engine, and of course the Ike has it as well. And my personal favorite again being the Ike. So let's just go and decouple that one. We'll do the Minmus first. I think that'll be a good way to go. And let's switch over to it so we're actually flying this baby. And as you'll see, we don't have a portrait over here because we have no interior whatsoever for this thing, but we do still have a Kerbal, of course. So let's fly this thing. Oh, it still had one more decoupler to go. There we are. Now we've activated the engine. And this thing on the low fuel consumption mode is actually pretty darn powerful. I mean, you could use this to easily land yourself on, say, perhaps Duna without any other assistance. I mean, I wouldn't suspect you'd have any troubles at all doing that. I mean, we're already up to about 2,500 meters and we've gone through about half of our fuel. Now, once we get up to the uh, full fuel consumption, let's see how far up we'll actually go as our max uh, height for this potential journey. As you can see, we're still burning, and we're at full thrust, too. So if you're, you know, throttled down a bit, you could go for quite a bit longer. So let's see where we end up. And there we go. So what does the map say? We have a roughly 15 kilometer apoapsis there. So this thing could go up 15 kilometers on its own engine power, which is fairly impressive. I'm actually just gonna revert our flight back to launch because, well, I didn't put parachutes on this thing, so it's, uh, <laughs> it would be a long fall downward. But yes, the next one we'll do, oh boy, which decoupler is that one? Let's actually move these babies around. Is that a thing? Add a, that down there, beautiful. And then switch over to it, and this one, haha, <laughs> we're gonna toggle to the other engine mode, so we'll do that. And this should use about, or well, spend all of its fuel in a few seconds. So, throttle up, SAS, and let's turn on our resources there. And there we go, holy crap. That was quick. <laughs> So that got us up only to about five kilometers though, but five kilometers in about three seconds. So that probably is more of an emergency flight mode, like if you're just crashing down towards the earth and you realize, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, I'm going way too fast, quick burn and you'll pretty much slow yourself down to a dead stop, I would imagine with that. That's, a, that's one hell of a burn, but in the end, Frankly, the other mode is quite a lot better considering, well, you get a lot more altitude and a lot more overall use out of it. Yeah, that's what I'm probably thinking for that uh, much more high power mode. It's really more there for an emergency burn if you are crash landing towards the planet, which, you know, is always something that you uh, would want to avoid. But yes, this is the common core pods. Of course, the last one over here is, uh, you know, it has no engine, so really nothing to show off with that. We could always turn on the RCS and, you know, play with that, but oop, did not mean to do that. Oh, well, what are you gonna do? But yeah, that's the common core pods at the moment. Three command pods, one heat shield, and four decouplers. Hopefully coming soon will be some parachutes and hopefully potentially some other 3.3 meter tanks. I think that would be quite nice. But that is going to be it for today's episode, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed. Oh, I should probably tell you where to get it, shouldn't I? As always, 
link is in the description guys and uh, like I said earlier in the episode I've recorded this a couple of days before um, normal so there might be more parts added to it by the time you guys see this but go check it out have some fun and hopefully he'll return for the next episode but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one <laughs>